All right, guys. It is another gray, dark, gloomy, depressing day here in the former paradise of Garfield, Texas. But hey, I still got a house, so I shouldn't complain on this depressing Saturday morning, October 20th. So it's been a busy couple of days in Garfield, Texas, and uh, so this is the first time, I guess, what is it, three days that I have had time to peek over at the mainstream media for all the various ways this planet's going to hell in a handbasket. Looks like we're going to have three <coughs> uh, Doomer headline roundup rants uh, coming up here, and we're going to start off with the roundup number one from our climate change meltdown roundup rant. Let the mainstream media tell us how uh, this planet's descending into a burning lake of fire here uh, in the fall of 2018. All right, we're going to meet somebody new here, and hopefully I uh, will have a uh, conversation with this woman soon. Climate scientist sees stage set for reprise of worst known drought and famine. All right, this is Washington State University Vancouver climate scientist Deep T. Singh. Yes, and she has completed the most thorough analysis yet of the great drought, the most devastating known drought of the past 800 years, and how it led to the global famine an unprecedented disaster that took 50 million lives. Uh, this was back in the 1870s. Never heard of this. Never heard of this. Uh, studying the great drought and wow, after studying history, she now warns that the Earth's current warming climate could make a similar drought even worse. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. We're looking at the latest threat to global food security. Yep, yep, yep. Um, anyway, guys, uh, we, I've got an email in to Deep Tea. See if she wants to come and talk a little more about this, but we need to move on. So let's go from Washington State University to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. What is going on with this Cornell scientist? Uh, this fellow is now saying that the world may hit two degrees of warming in 10 to 15 years thanks to fracking. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, in 2011, a Cornell University research team first made the groundbreaking discovery that leaking methane from the shale gas fracking boom could make burning fracking gas even worse for the climate than burning coal. No shit, Sherlock. And in a sobering lecture released this month, a member of that team, Dr. Anthony Ingrathia uh, from Cornell, outlined more precisely the, the role U.S. fracking is changing the world's climate. Um, <clears throat> and the most recent climate data that this fellow is reading suggests that the world is on track to cross the two degrees of warming threshold uh, in just 10 to 15 years. And that is if American energy polo policy follows the track predicted by the, EI, the Energy Information Administration, which expects one million natural gas wells will be producing gas in the U.S. in 2050, one million. Uh, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna touch on this 
here in uh, another story, either in this roundup or the next one. Okay, this is your old doomsday real estate agent. Uh, think I'm, I'm thinking about running down to the Florida Panhandle to see if I can grab some good real estate buys right now. <clears throat> wow, finally we're hearing some little peeps of this in the mainstream media. Climate change and the coming coastal real estate crash. It could rival the bursting dot-com and the real estate bubbles. No shit, Sherlock. Yep. Then uh, they... Okay, we need to move through all of this stuff to to get to the actual story, uh, you know, they start in with, obviously, with, with Hurricane Michael, uh, which underscores a new reality that has been slow to dawn on many involved in coastal real estate. Climate change and the accompanying rise in sea level and storm activity will require expensive investments and shake the foundations of some of the most expensive land in the country. Like many of the impacts of a warming planet, these serious economic reverberations and permanent damage caused by declining coastal property values are simply not being addressed in an urgent manner. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, anyway, and now the warnings have only become more dire. Yep, yep. Uh, the warnings have become more dire. I wonder what Florida coastal real estate prices are looking like after this latest slam. I should look into that. I'm sure uh, my, my fellow uh, eco-Nazis got, got a sick, twisted laugh uh, out, out of this story. EPA cheers decline in U.S. greenhouse gas emissions under Donald Trump administration. And there, there, there's all sorts of stories uh, on, uh, on this one. Uh, this is the Washington Times. I'm just going to read a little bit about this shit. The EPA announced on Wednesday that reported U.S. greenhouse gas emissions declined by 2.7% in 2017. The first uh, year of the Trump presidency and what was described as a win-win for the environment and the economy. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, this is uh, Andrew Wheeler, the, the former coal lobbyist now running the, uh, <coughs> the EPA. Thanks to President Trump's regulatory reform agenda. The economy is booming, energy production is surging, no shit, Sherlock. and we are reducing greenhouse gas emissions from major industrial sources. These achievements flow largely from technological breakthroughs uh, in the private sector, not the heavy hand of government. Uh, any, any, anyway, guys, this bullshit goes on and on. So, I, I don't know how deep the, the, the bullshit goes in this story. For number one, I don't believe the, 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 uh, the, the fucking uh, greenhouse gas emissions. 
uh, report anyway. I don't have any idea. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing the question out there. Will someone in the tribe please answer this question? Do these uh, greenhouse gas emissions mention all of the leaking methane that this uh, fellow from Cornell we were talking about? My guess is that this bullshit report nowhere takes into account methane that what it is looking at is, is CO2 releases probably mostly from power plants and, and transportation maybe. Uh, but the other joke as, as, the, as what the Times is, is, is reporting uh, and particularly with, you know, with Andrew Wheeler, the, the coal lobbyist, is it, it, the only reason that uh, that greenhouse gas emissions uh, dropped in the first year of Donald Trump is that more and more power plants are stopped uh, have stopped using coal and have moved to natural gas. So it, measuring the output from the uh, from the power plants. Yes, natural gas does burn clean once it finally makes it to the oven, but uh, right up to the point, the shit's leaking everywhere and, and, and putting more greenhouse gases in the form of methane in the air than the burning of coal uh, it, it is putting in there. And of course, the, the big joke is that Donald Trump and, and Andrew Wheeler are huge supporters of coal uh, fired power plants. If Donald Trump and Andrew Wheeler had their way, uh, there would be more coal being burned in this country than ever in history, and the greenhouse gas emissions as measured in this bullshit report would be going up, not down, if Andrew Wheeler and Donald Trump had their way. Uh, you know, there's so many layers uh, of, of bullshit in this onion. You know, how many shovels does it take, for God's sake? All right, for a peek into the end times, all we got to do is look back about a week. What's the latest news uh, from yesterday from the Florida Panhandle? Post Michael, Florida. Fear? Frustration and life on the edge. Missing relatives and worry and worries that looters are just outside the door. Dirty clothes, hour-long lines for gasoline, insurance adjusters, food and water, no power, no air conditioning, no schools, no information, and little real improvement in sight, as daily life is a series of fears and frustrations, both large and small, for thousands of people living on the edge more than a week after Hurricane Michael flattened thousands of square miles in the hurricane zone of the Florida Panhandle. Guys, if anybody wants to understand what the Mad Max future is going to look like as it unfolds. And this is right here in our own shithole country. You don't have to go to fucking Somalia to see Mad Max uh, rolling out. This is Associated Press reporting on the United States of America in the year 2018. Daily life is a series of fears and <coughs> frustration. And uh, multiply this story by about three million and, and you will have some understanding of life on the shithole planet as, as this whole thing comes tumbling down. Let's go over, I guess, pretty much well, this is centering on the shithole country of France, but it's pretty much the whole damn shithole continent of Europe. As summer drought shrinks supplies of French 
spuds. It's harvest time and the chips are down for, pro for potato producers in northern France where a long summer drought could see French spuds shrink in both size and volume. <clears throat> yes. Uh, talking about 98 degree Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius temperatures in August. Uh, all five, all five top European Union potato producers, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, France, and the UK have been hit by the unusually hot summer weather. And there you go. This is one more peak. Okay, as long as we're over there in the shithole continent of Europe, what's it look like in the shithole country of Germany? Water woes as drought leaves Germany's Rhine shallow. Yeah, and then the picture they show is just this sun-baked, uh, parched wasteland with a little trickle of water running down the middle of it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, months of drought have left water levels on Germany's Rhine River at a record low, exposing a World War II bomb and forcing ship operators to halt services to prevent vessels from running aground. The water level on the Rhine on Friday, this is yesterday, uh, reached just 77 centimeters, otherwise known as 30 inches, which is 4 centimeters or over an inch. Uh, below the previous record set in 2003. There you go. Uh, although some rain is expected next, next week, forecasters said it would not suffice to bring up water levels in Germany's most important waterway and a key shipping route for the Netherlands and France. There you go. So, you know, they can have some of the water from right across the fucking street. I wish I could route uh, the, the, the water 300 feet from me uh, over to Germany. They, they, they could use some of this shit. You know, guys, from here on out, if the droughts don't get you, the floods will. Speaking of flooding in Texas... Uh, speaking of flooding in Texas, Houston seeks two billion dollars more. Houston seeks two billion dollars more aid paid for by American taxpayers ultimately for Hurricane Harvey housing recovery. This is more than a year. Houston officials are preparing to request an additional two billion dollars to from Congress to provide more assistance to residents whose homes were damaged by Hurricane uh, Car Hurricane Harvey, and this request comes as lawmakers are considering aid for victims of recent hurricanes Florida and Michael. There, there you go. Two billion dollars more uh, from, you know, and, and believe me, we came damn close for your old climate refugee Hammon Littletail holding out his hand to American taxpayers. You know, and, and this, it, it doesn't make any, the reason I don't have any flood insurance on this house, for one reason, is too damn expensive is the main reason, but they, but, but they fuck you, they don't pay off. And, and so a lot of these homeowners, they even have private insurance, who, who a year later have not come up with a dollar to pay off their insurance policy, so leave it to the American taxpayer. 
Uh, you know, the bills are coming in, guys. All right. <clears throat> What's the latest in these kids suing the federal government? Trump administration asks Supreme Court to halt climate change case, and now that the court is loaded in their favor, it very well might happen. <coughs> President Donald Trump's administration on Thursday for a second time asked the U.S. Supreme Court to put the brakes on a lawsuit filed by young activists who have accused the U.S. government of ignoring the perils of climate change. In the lawsuit, 21 activists age 11 to 22 are claiming their <coughs> federal officials violated their rights to due process under the U.S. Constitution by failing to adequately address carbon pollution such as emissions from the burning of fossil fuels. So, uh, of course, this was filed under Barack Obama. Uh, on July 30th, the High Court rejected an early earlier attempt but now, of course, since we got that, um, that little uh, Donald Trump ass-licking toady, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, my guess is it will be thrown out. And that is your old doomsday prophets uh, guess on that. What's going down there in the shithole, pretty much anywhere, shithole Latin America, coffee rust threatens Latin American crop 150 years ago, it wiped out an empire. <coughs> this is just this latest. I've had this story uh, many times about how climate change is all the different ways uh, that climate change is fucking with the coffee crop. And, and, and the, you know, this is what I don't get. In the middle of all this, I've noticed that coffee prices are, are, are lower than I've seen them in years. Coffee prices in Austin, Texas are dropping. Tequila prices in Austin, te Texas are dropping. I, I, you know, I just, I, I, I just don't get it, guys. I confuse them till they die, as they say. Okay, we have another scientist weighing in. This scientist keeps winning money from people who bet against climate change. James Annan keeps on winning. Annan, a climate scientist and director of the Blue Skies Research Organization, has won numerous bets over the last decade against scientists from a variety of academic backgrounds. In short, people keep betting him that the world will cool or warm slightly rather than continue on its accelerating warming trend. And Annan has not lost yet. Most recently, he won, two, he won $10,000 from two solar physicists from Russia on a wager agreed upon 10 years ago. Uh, by now, the results have come in showing that 2012 to 2017 was warmer than 1998 to 2003. Even though he's won the bet, his fellow gamblers will not pay up. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, yep, yep. But we're going to end kind of as a segue into part two in this rant. Uh, what is George Monbiot uh, ranting about in the, uh, in the Guardian this week? He is celebrating the, these fracking protesters over there 
in Zombie Island uh, protesting the, this fracking ramping up in England. And this is how he, uh, <clears throat> he, he, he says we're going to win the war. Our politicians, under the influence of big business, have failed us. As they take the planet to the brink, it is time for disruptive, nonviolent disobedience. As the fracking protesters show, a people's rebellion, a people's rebellion is the only way to fight climate breakdown. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. I guess uh, George Monbiot has not read uh, 1984. People's Rebellion. Uh, my my uh, ass. It, it, it's the uh, people keeping their fucking pecker in their pants. I, is, jo is George Monbiot a breeder? Because uh, someone please look that up and tell me if George Monbiot is a breeder. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up part one of this uh, three-part uh, Doomer headline, and we're going to come back with part two, just some more flotsam and jetsam uh, headlines from around the mainstream media doomosphere to look at how the planet is going straight to hell in a handbasket uh, with or without climate change coming right up. Smoke them if you got them, and you don't need my sign to tell you why. Bye, guys.